Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the February Garden Checklist video. I do these uh, each month. I think this will be the third time I'm doing a February Garden Checklist. The first one I ever did is longer and very extensive and went through lots and lots of different things. I've kind of narrowed this down to things that I am personally doing in my garden here in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. I'm standing behind a big group of shrubs that I have on my driveway that have just been pushed pot tight uh, so that I can occasionally cover them if it's, you know, we're going to have really cold temperatures. But I'm standing in this group because I want to point out that you can continue to plant here as long as the ground is workable and the plants have been acclimated to outdoors. And so all of these plants right here have been outside the entire winter. I've, I've put a cover over them three or four times when it's been, you know, where the pots were going to freeze solid. But any of these items on this driveway could go in the ground anytime, again, that I can dig a hole and it's, and, and it's workable. What I want you to pay attention to when you're thinking about planting here in January, February, March, is that you could be buying plants that came out of a greenhouse condition or they were grown on the Gulf Coast somewhere and then shipped up uh, to your area. And they have a lot of new growth on them, a lot of flowers on them, that kind of thing. That I'm going to avoid planting in February. But again, if it's acclimated, if it's been sitting out on a table at the garden center you're buying it from, grab it, bring it home, put it in the ground, no problem. Another thing I like to avoid probably is dormant grasses. I, I've spoken to this many times. Back in my landscape days, that would be one thing that I, um, you know, I guaranteed, you know, guaranteed plants for a year while I was landscaping. And one thing that would bite me occasionally was putting in dormant grasses before they started to wake up in the spring. Once they start putting on some new growth in the spring, put them in the ground. The other things you can be on the lookout for here in February that can go in the ground are bare root fruit trees, bare root roses, bare root, you know, grapes, blueberries. Those are things you can find uh, this time of year uh, during the month of February, and they can go ahead and go in the ground as, again, as long as the ground is workable in your area. You can also look for asparagus and strawberries and some of those um, uh, some of those things are available this time of year as bare root uh, and those can go ahead and go in the ground or you can mail order them uh, that's another thing i like to go ahead and get my tropical bulbs now it's way too early to put them in the ground i don't put them in the ground till later and that's going to be things like elephant ears and uh, caladiums uh, you can find those now in retail places but they need to come home put them in a dark cool area and uh, again around April 15th which is my frost free date I can go ahead and put those in containers or in the ground or whatever I'm going to do with them for the season. I have a lot of cool season annuals that I planted in the fall that's pansies and snapdragons and violas and um, some leafy greens uh, as well. If you've got holes in those there may still be some of those things available uh, to fill in. Uh, most of these for me here in zone 7b in the south these are winter and spring annuals so they'll burn out you know late spring or early summer but they'll look beautiful between now and then maybe maybe ought to get a deal on them honestly at this point uh in the season this late in the season moving over to the vegetable garden and planning for the uh 2022 vegetable growing season uh, i do uh cool season vegetables uh early uh in the season uh, and then i do my summer vegetables and then i do a fall crop as well this time of year in the late winter, and I put up a video recently about this, I, I went in here, um, weeded. I didn't fully weed. I actually have a few more weeds to get out of here um, with my, uh, with my uh, little hoe like this. Um, uh, and I'll get the rest of those out. But I added about two inches of compost, inch and a half to two inches of compost. I do this once a year. I'm gonna plant directly into this. This soil improves every year I do this. It's basically a no-till approach uh, to vegetable gardening. Okay, so in February, I'm gonna start a new round of cool season vegetables. So that's gonna be broccoli and lettuces and kohlrabi and lot, lots of cool, all the cool season things, the early things. You can get a chart online for the zone that you live in. So if you, if you search zone six vegetable planting guide, uh, very quickly, you'll get a guide and you can see all the cool season things that you should, when you should be doing them from seed, if you're doing them from seed in the house, or when you should do them from seed, if you're doing them directly in the ground from seed, you need this chart. Okay, so if I pull up the zone seven chart, all of those things, you'll start to see right at the beginning of February, cool season vegetable seed starting time. So that's what I'm going to be doing here in the next week or two getting all those started. By the end of February, those things are gonna be going into the garden. 
I may still have some cold nights at that point. I've got these hoops over top of it. I can pull something over the top of it if I need to, uh, if I need to protect them. That would be temperatures like in the low 20s, which by the end of February when I'm putting this in the ground in my area is probably unlikely, but I'm prepared for it just in case. By the end of February, it will almost be time to start my summer vegetables from seed in the house. And I, again, I do this on a light rack in the house. I have a video for the light rack. There are other ways to start seeds. You can do winter sowing outside. There's a lot of videos on YouTube for that. A lot of these things can just be direct sown in the garden, okay? But I prefer to start mine in trays under a light rack in the house. I get uniformity from it and uh, that tends to translate into, into better yields as well, ultimately. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna start some cool season vegetables at the beginning of February. Toward the end of February, man, that's still a little early for me for my warm season vegetables. But again, pull up the chart. You'll see exactly when you should be starting seeds if you're doing them indoors or when they should go in the ground if they're going outdoors. And um, you'll see if you follow along with the channel, uh, I'll show you each of these things. I'll document them as I go. If you're in zone seven or zone six, should be extremely helpful. If you're in zone eight, nine, 10, you should be starting these things earlier uh, than I am in my area. And again, just pull up the chart on Google. So again, the beginning of uh, the month is just prep for me, getting it ready. I won't have um, anything to actually put out here till the end of February. That'll be cool season stuff. One thing to look for, look on the back of the packet for how long uh, it takes from seed to transplant, meaning the amount of time it takes for you to germinate the seed and get it to a transplantable size into your garden. That'll be on the back of the packet. So for peppers, that's six to eight weeks. It takes a long time for peppers. They get started a little earlier than other things typically. I won't put my peppers in the garden until about April 21st when the soil temperature is about 65 degrees, which I have a soil thermometer for, by the way. Um, it's an inexpensive tool. I've shown it many times on the channel. It is actually very useful. If I'm six to eight weeks to put my peppers in the ground, then I know I need to start my peppers six to eight weeks before April 21st. And so that's how you do it. Just look on the back of the packet and back up the amount of weeks it takes for that seed to become transplantable uh, real quick and easy. The other thing you can be looking for right now is your cool season uh, vegetable, um, I mean, cool season herbs. So that could be parsley, dill, cilantro. Those plants are probably available at some of the garden centers at this point. Uh, and, uh, or um, you, can, you can start them from seed right now as well, but they can go out toward the end of February as well. As February comes around, uh, this is a maintenance season. Main there's a lot of maintenance that can be done in February. If you've got hard pruning to do, like you've got big green shrubs that you've wanted to get under control, toward the end of February is the best time of year to do that. You're, I've been putting up some pruning videos uh, that you guys have, you can go back and reference on the channel. You need to know what you have. Uh, any general pruning that you do right now, you could be taking off flowers. So um, if you want to wait until after things flower in the spring to prune them, do that. This Laura Petalum is a great example of something that's gonna bloom in a few weeks for me. And I don't wanna be cutting it uh, right now. As soon as it finishes flowering though, I need to get this thing under control. It's, you know, two or three feet, four feet taller than I actually want it. So um, I'm gonna get after it, but I'm waiting till after it flowers. But all of your green, shrubbery things that you want to get under control again you can go after those pretty hard next up is mulching I mean, you know keeping the ground covered uh, during the month of february i'm going to basically put a cap on these leaves that are out here in my garden space looks a little bit unruly right now but these leaves make great mulch they've done a great job through the winter of weed suppression keeping the roots warm on my plants moisture control all of those kinds of things great benefits from these leaves I'm about to put a thin mulch layer over the top of them so they'll look great going into the new year. Watering is another thing. I had to water right up through December this year. We had a really abnormally dry fall. We're finally getting regular rainfall out here, so I'm not having to think about it as much. But your containers, you want to continue to make sure you're checking on them. They can get dry. The air is dry this time of year. And so on the sunny days in February, um, you know, your containers can dry out quite a bit more than you would think they would. Same thing with everything in the landscape. If you went three or four weeks, you know, in February without rain, you may want to check on things, especially newer planted things from the previous year. Water's a 
a good insulator. And next up on the big maintenance things, uh, this is the month that I fertilize. I actually did mine a little bit earlier this year. I did it right at the end of January, but typically mid to late February, I fertilize my entire landscape. Uh, that includes my cool season turf, or my warm season turf, which is asleep right now. All of my shrubs, trees, perennials, everything in this landscape has been fertilized uh, at this point. It's the only time of year I do it, only time of year I think is necessary to do it, except for my vegetable garden when I change it out, I will refertilize that. So when I go from cool season vegetables over to warm season vegetables for the summer, it'll get refertilized. And my containers, I will fertilize a few times during the growing season. But everything in the ground, this is a once a year deal. I'm using an organic fertilizer and these leaves breaking down and this mulch breaking down, um, that's plenty to feed my plants throughout the growing season. If you followed this channel for the last couple of years, you will see how much growth I've had on this material with a limited amount of actual fertilizer that came from a bag. So your plants are a little thinner this time of year and you can see some of the perennial weeds that have snuck into the bottom of them. Uh, this is a good time of year to pull these kind of woody weeds like this uh, Japanese ligustrum right here. Uh, it can be pulled and just thrown out on the bed as long as the roots are, 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 are out of it. But this time of year, you can see some of those things that you couldn't see other times of the year. You can also uh, reach under there with confidence that you know something's not gonna bite you here while it's cold. Uh, but I do look for those perennial weeds. February can be a giant seesaw um, of temperatures and we may it may get extremely warm right at the beginning of February. I don't know whether it would or not, but things might start to wake up. Be prepared to cover them and to protect them if they start to wake up and we just get in this up and down thing. I don't protect any plants in my landscape that are super, super hardy uh, in my area. The only things I'm really looking for out here are the things that are marginally hardy in my area. So I've got palms here in the backyard as an example of that and things that are right on the edge of being hardy. Those are the things I go around and cover during these seesaws that happen during the uh, month of February. February is a great time to either uh, define new spaces, lay out new beds, get prepared to add to your landscape, to change your landscape. The way I approached this garden to begin with was I, I covered it in compost, the same as you just saw over there in the vegetable garden. I put down about an inch of compost and then I mulched. Um, again, you'd fertilize this month. You can go ahead and do that to new garden spaces and have them ready to go for planting and get that soil coming back to life. If you have uh, existing places, uh, this is a great time of year to go and edge your turf. Uh, I can just take this, because the, the soil is moist and because we've had this freeze thaw recently this soil is ex you know just super super easy for me to go along and cut this trench edge along the edge of my grass i'm not going to do the best job ever right now because i'm talking while i'm doing it but i do have uh videos on my channel for trench edging and uh man what a great time of year to do it uh you know doing this in july is terrible because it's it's obviously hot outside and the soil is hard as a rock um this time of year uh, that's quick and easy to cut in these new, you know, cut in, cut in new spaces or define old spaces. I don't spend a lot of time on turf on this channel, but I do have some poana in the back garden or the back turf and the front turf. I'm just actually going to pull this by hand. I have two very tiny turf spots, and uh, I can get in here and pull. Uh, there's some uh, uh, chickweed here, uh, and then some poana. There's actually a few um, onions out here as well. I'm just going to go through here and hand pull them while I can see them before my turf wakes back up. This uh, cool season turf got fertilized with my shrubs and trees and everything with an organic fertilizer. That's all I do on this uh, zoysia grass. I will fertilize it again during the growing season again with an organic fertilizer. Uh, this is, um, you know, the time of year I talked about adding new bed spaces, redefining old bed spaces and planning. Uh, a lot of planning can be done now. One thing is your local garden center. Uh, this has been nursery show season is in January and early February, and all of your local garden centers have been around uh, lots of other nurserymen recently, um, and they've seen what they have, they've seen what they're gonna have available. Maybe a good time of year if you have a shopping list to go to your local garden center while they're booking all their spring plants, and maybe they can um, you know, add something to a truck that they may not have ordered, or maybe you showing interest in it um, is the reason that they do add it uh, to the things they're buying in for the season, so that's, you know, that's a good idea, and again, I start shopping right now. I want to find, you know, I, I need, I'm going to get seed potatoes. 
uh, right now. Uh, that's something I didn't talk about earlier when I was talking about things you can buy, purchase this time of year. And again, I always talk about planning uh, in these videos. Visit arboretums, go around and see things that look good even in February uh, in, in the landscape. Those, and uh, you know, think about adding those and document you know, all your steps, things you can remember that went well from last year, things that didn't, things that you, you know, things you have in mind, things you see in neighbors' uh, gardens. Um, you know, get a Plan ID app on your phone and you can walk up to something, take a photo of it and hopefully get it identified pretty quickly and add that to your gardens. I frequently talk about the more species you have in your garden, the less problems you have overall. That goes past just individual plant varieties, which I have lots and lots of different plants out here. It also includes the birds. And so when it's frozen here in February, make sure you know, they have water, uh, that they have food. Make sure that you um, uh, invite them into your garden because they are, you know, they're, you know, animal, they'll come through and flip over all these leaves and find all the bad guys in my garden. They take care of a lot of issues that I would have to think about spraying for without them in my garden. So I'm cleaning out bird houses and just generally taking care of the birds here in uh, February. So thank you guys for following along with these monthly checklist videos. Uh, it honestly gets kind of exciting here in February. There's a lot to do and a lot to prepare for and uh, getting ready for the uh, 2022 spring growing season. Thanks for watching.